late 1800s and the early 1900s, it's good to remember that the eastern hemlock tree was one of the largest trees in a mountain environment. They could be between four to six feet in diameter and be essentially the size of a pond, almost to the size of a ponderosa pine out west, which is really astounding. And they created their own microclimates where the, the areas right around streams would be extraordinarily cool, even in the heat of the summer. It was really the, the, the key to influencing Herbert and Lou Hoover's decision to buy Rapidan Camp on the east side of the mountains. And it was also a key deciding factor for Addie Pollock when she heard that the, the trees in Limberlost were going to be cut down. It inspired her to spend $10 a tree to save the last 100 trees in the area and preserve that grove of hemlocks in perpetuity. In 1988, park staff found hemlock woolly adelgid in Shenandoah National Park. It was a small, aphid, invasive insect that caused a hemlock decline by sap feeding on the hemlocks. The hemlock woolly adelgid feeds on the needles at the base of the needle and sucks the sap and the starches out of the tree. It causes needle loss and general decline over a period of about three to four years and ultimately mortality. By the mid-90s, many of the park hemlock sites were infested with HWA, hemlock woolly adelgid, and by the early 2000s, we saw upwards of 90 to 95% mortality in the park. And here's an example of a tree that's been affected by hemlock woolly adelgid, and has probably been dead for at least 10 years. So as a result of a lot of the decline of the hemlocks in the mid-90s and early 2000s, the park began a hemlock woolly adelgid suppression program. At first, we focused on larger hemlocks in developed areas, and staff used a combination of horticultural oils and horticultural soaps, and we did foliar treatments. That method was fairly time-consuming, took a lot of retreatments, but by 2005, uh, we found a better method. It was a imidacloprid soil treatment or soil injection method. And we be began that in earnest in 2005. And we treated trees on an eight year treatment cycle. And as of 2021, we've treated upwards of 28,000 trees to date in the park. So the soil injection treatment method uh, involved putting sort of metered doses around the root collar of a specific hemlock tree. The imidacloprid was very specific to that tree. There were no non-target effects for other vegetation. Um, it was, it's a very effective treatment method. It gives you about eight years of treatment longevity, but it's not something you necessarily want to continue in perpetuity. One limitation of the systemic pesticide that we were using, it didn't allow us to treat trees that were close to water. One thing that we realized was, how are we going to get those trees treated? We actually reached out to Virginia Tech in 2015 and began a project where we began releasing predatory beetles or biocontrols in certain areas that were untreated in order to sort of become less reliant on chemical controls. So as part of the hemlock woolly adelgid biocontrol program, we're using beetles called Laracobius beetles. They're in the Laracobius genus. They feed exclusively on hemlock woolly adelgid. They need hemlock woolly adelgid to complete their life cycle. So as part of this program, we not only work closely with the Virginia Tech Entomology Lab and Dr. Scott Salem, very closely with sort of the release piece, but we also do monitoring to make sure that we have the Laracobius beetles established at the sites that we put them at. And we've seen so far at some of the release sites that we've done Laracobius releases in 2017 and 2019, um, we're seeing desirable and good reestablishment of Laracobius beetles at those sites. And we're seeing some natural movement of Laracobius as much as two to three miles. So we're finding Laracobius in hemlock clusters that weren't, as, weren't part of a release site. So ultimately, we'd like to become less reliant on chemical controls. And we see perhaps in 10 to 20 years that that could be possible. We're already starting to see good establishment of Laracobius beetles in some of the areas where we did 
releases in 2017 and 2019. So that's very promising. This hemlock woolly adelgid biocontrol work wouldn't be possible without the generous donations of the Shenandoah National Park Trust. The trust donates a significant amount of money towards the chemical treatments that help save our hemlocks, but also purchases the beetles um, through Virginia Tech. The great things about working with the Shenandoah National Park Trust is that we can explore um, treatments that don't involve pesticides. We can actually um, release all these Laracobia beetles to try and control the hemlock woolly adelgid. And that's very important because what we need is we need a bridge to the future. We need a capability to bring the hemlock trees that have come with us to a, to a time period where the adelgid is under control and the groves of hemlocks have an amount of time necessary to recover. So we do have hope because the Laracobia beetle uh, treatments appear to be working, but we need time to have those treatments be successful. Hi, I'm Jessica Cochalone, and I am the Executive Director of the Shenandoah National Park Trust, and we are proud to be the philanthropic partner of the Shenandoah National Park. Our mission is to invest philanthropic dollars in initiatives and programs that ensure Shenandoah remains the crown jewel of the national park system, an economic driver for the region, and a national treasure for all to enjoy today and tomorrow. If you are interested in learning more about Shenandoah National Park Trust and supporting this program, please visit us online at snptrust.org.